Sunday afternoon. And for more on the explosion, we are joined by Tom Mikaitis. He is a DePaul professor as well as a terrorism expert. Thank you for joining us, Tom. Good evening. Okay, let's begin with the type of attack, the style of this attack. What does this tell you about the person who is responsible or the group that may be responsible and may be behind this? Well, first of all, it's a very common type of attack. I would guess, uh, based on what I've seen, that it was probably a fertilizer bomb laced with accelerant, similar to the one that was used in Oklahoma City and has been used in other attacks as well. Beyond that, I would describe this as a very bizarre incident. When you go to the trouble to make a bomb of that size and that lethality, to detonate it at a time and place with a warning, apparently, um, where it's likely not to cause casualties of any great extent, um, it, it doesn't fit the pattern of any known group. Islamists like body count. Um, white supremacists tend to like government targets. They're not going to pick uh, a city in a very red state, um, mm -hmm. and they're not going to pick a, a restaurant area. So it's I, I'm thinking at this point it's almost a Ted Kaczynski Unabomber, uh, you know, idiosyncratic lone wolf, but we won't know for a while. Well, I know that they will, um, authorities will be examining the forensics of this to try to yeah. understand, uh, you know, who ultimately did this, while also asking the questions that you just raised about why would this happen? Mm -hmm. What sort of things will they be able to kind of take away from uh, the blast site? Well, first of all, um, the vehicle identification number is stamped on various parts, including parts of the chassis. So it's extremely likely when they sort through the debris that they will actually identify the vehicle. Now, it could easily have come from a long distance away. There's no way to know yet. But if they can identify the vehicle, that's the first step forward. From the description, of, they said they found remains in the area. If the word nearby suggests to me that, sadly, it may have been somebody out walking their dog rather mm. than the perpetrator. Um, the perpetrator left a, apparently a bizarre recorded message saying, this is going to explode in 15 minutes, please stay away or whatever. And absolutely it was right. There were reports of gunfire and so on. So whoever detonated this did not apparently want to kill large numbers of people, but mm -hmm. they wanted to send a message of some kind until there's a claim of responsibility or something else we just don't know. Yeah. One commentator, uh, Tom, brought up and pointed out that maybe police, not citizens, may have been the target. And, and the reason he was giving behind that was yes. because there was that audio warning that went out. And so the only people that would have then gone in to check would have been police. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? That's a very good possibility. There were also apparently reports of gunshots, and those could have been on the recording for right. all we know. Yeah, that's an old tactic, too. Typically, you know, a small detonation or an incident draw in first responders and then detonate your main device. That's mm -hmm. a very old tactic. So that could have been um, the target. Um, and yet the warning was enough that it, um, you know, they seem to be far enough away. One police officer apparently was knocked over by the concussion. Then again, you know, how precise were they? Did it pre-detonate? We don't know. I mean, there's so many unresolved questions sure. here. But yeah, that's another possibility. When you woke up to this news like we all did, um, what was your immediate uh, fear, concern about what people will uh, take away from this, what they will read into it? What will they fear knowing how difficult this, you know, this 2020 has been for everybody around the whole world? Well, that, uh, ter being flippant, that was my first reaction. This is 2020. What else? Nothing will surprise us. I think I'm relieved that there was not great loss of life. I'm relieved that there's no indication that it was international terrorism uh, or anyone else. Um, so I think if, at this point, we can breathe a temporary sigh of release. The fear is, if this is an individual seeking attention, are we going to get a message, hey, okay, that was a warning. Now, if you don't do A, B, and C, the next time I'm going to do something more deadly. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I'm a little concerned that we've gotten lax. A vehicle parked in an area like that for eight hours or five hours should have drawn some attention, and I think we're going to be back to being more cautious about that. But, you know, terrorism hasn't gone away just because we've been preoccupied with other things. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Okay, Tom Mikaitis, our terrorism expert for WGN, we appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your holiday, sir. You Thank too. You.